What's up, what's up, everybody? All right, guys, so uh, today I just wanted to kind of make a quick video on um, charting and uh, a few more things to look out for, like why um, why you should be charting and um, what, what kind of stuff you should be looking for. A lot of traders out there who are new get a little bit confused because they don't know what to do in the beginning. Or you may have trouble um, drawing some trend lines on your chart or just in general, like you don't know what you're looking for because it seems alien to you. I'm here to tell you that it's not that uh, alien uh, and it is something that you can definitely learn and pick up as time goes by. An experienced trader um, has a little bit more of an ease of charting versus a new trader. A new trader will try to look for things that he's learned from all the videos he's been watching. One thing that uh, charting teaches is wicks and trend lines, right? So somebody will draw this specific trend line here and call that charting. Now, is this charting? Yes, it is, but to an extent. You don't need this. Currently right now with Amazon, we're at 94. So why are you gonna come up here and draw this trend line up here if you don't really need it right now? So I am going to extend it to the right and just kind of show you like why people would draw that, but you don't need it. Okay. So we don't need that. Take that off your list. What you want to do as a new trader is figure out where you're at. Are we at a support? Are we at a resistance? What can you see from this specific chart that stands out to you the most? Number one, we turned it down. Then we went back up. And then we went back down and we went down even further, okay? That's what you can easily identify off this chart. You can say, hey, Amazon is trending down. That is your trend on Amazon. So again, does this trend line matter? The answer is no, okay? Uh, the next thing is you want to look for areas where we kind of slow down. So we kind of just slow down in this area, right? You can see it. This is where we kind of went sideways. These are things that you should be looking for. Those areas where we slowed down, where we accumulated, where we traded in a range, in a base, that's the kind of stuff you want to look for, okay? Do I need that specific level right now charted? The answer is no, because we're not nowhere near that level, okay? Uh, the next thing is you want to know where the, where the previous bottom was, which is down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this trend line down here and show you that uh, we are at this bottom. Is this um, irrelevant right now or is it relevant? Well, technically I can leave it there and use it as a target if I'm down here, correct? Now I wanna come down here and find the next previous base, okay? Here's the base down here. This is like one of the bottoms, okay? So look at this, one, two, three, four. Four days, we kind of stayed down at this level. And then on the fifth day, we dropped out, but then snapped back inside. So that 89, that 89 is a nice, good level to look out for. Next thing I want to do is I want to grab this base here because this is the top. Okay, there you go. So see how that 91.85 matches here, matches here, matches here. And then in here, it kind of snapped down and then it went back inside. It just shows you that it's a nice base. So now you have a chart charted, okay? Amazon, you have the previous low from where we broke out from right here, rejected and rejected here. And then we also found a bottom, which is down here. So the point of charting this is to figure out where we are currently trading at with Amazon and what is it that we're going to do um, with this specific ticker and what my plan should be or where I should set my alerts or what I should look for, things like that. These are the things I teach you to develop a patience and not catch any FOMO just because you see something at a good price point or just because something's at resistance and you want to short it. Just because something's at resistance doesn't mean it's going to reject. Because something's at demand doesn't mean that it has to bounce. Stocks will do whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want, with or without you. Whether you have your open chart or not, it's going to do what it's going to do with or without you. So remember that. The stock market, while it's open, does not wait for you. It's not going to give you a, a bell and say, hey, 
uh, I am forming a bull flag in the next 20 minutes. Please keep alerts on me. It does not do that. So our job is to figure out where we're going to wait for. Um, and what I want to show you here with um, Amazon is that it, it's it's kind of in a range, right? So we're between like that 100 and between this 90. Is there a specific setup on Amazon right now that makes sense to us? Let's look. Can this be considered a bull flag? Can it be, con can it be considered a slowdown? Can it be considered 50% retracement of this candle? Or are we just gonna, you know, drop back down um, or, and, you know, look for the dip by down here? What is it that we're going to do? What is it that we're going to wait for? What is, uh, what is gonna determine for us to go long or for us to go short? At this point, you gotta look at Amazon and say, hey, well, there is no specific setup, okay? Not yet, at least. I, I personally don't think so. I don't think this bull flag is proper yet, okay? Um, what, what I do see though, is I wanna look at the previous uh, movement as well, okay? So this is all I really need. I know that down here is gonna be my support and I know that up here is gonna be my uh, resistance. So I'm gonna look at this piece right here, okay? This is where we rejected that 95. I'm using that wick. And then this is right here where we kind of stopped that 94.50. So it gives us like a 50 cent um, supply. The minute that we go above that, I'll know that these sellers who were here in the past are not going to be here anymore. Okay. Boom. So that's going to be my entry for a long over 95. Okay. That's how simple I made it out to be. So now I don't need this here and I don't need this at all. All right. Because I don't think that's like a bull flag setup. Although it may look like one, it is not. Okay, somebody out there will probably call it a bull flag, but I'm here to tell you that it's not, okay? Um, all right, so that's your 95. That's where I'm gonna set my alert, just so you can see now. And I'm setting alerts on the top because uh, the minute is, if I answer over 95, I wanna make sure that my alerts keep popping off to the top, right? Um, if this decides to drop below that 94, okay, so this price point here, <clears throat> there's a high probability that we might just drop back down here. So at this point, do we look for that dip buy? Uh, it depends on how you want to trade this. The answer is yes, you could look for a dip buy. Now, this is why we stress the importance of having a, um, a trend line at those candle bodies and not the wicks because the wicks can be used as stop losses. Your entry is that 91.86 uh, with your stop loss right there at that 91.50. That's how that trade should be. You should be able to buy the dip right here and then you stop out right here. Very, very simple trade. Why? Because you bought at demand. You bought like as it was in the past, in the past, and in the past. In the past, that level always bounced. So can it do the same here on Monday? If, if Monday it decides to drop back down, can it decide to do that? That's how simple you can keep a trade. It's the same on this side. If you decide to uh, take it over 95, your stop loss becomes right here because you don't want it to drop back inside. The minute it drops back inside is because these sellers who were here in the past are, are at it again. And that's something you don't want to fight, okay? You want to make sure that it stays over 95 and you move your trail stop as it goes up and up and up, okay? So um, those are things to look out for. It's all about like understanding where you're currently at, where your previous bottom is, and um, where your previous slowdown base is at. So all the bases that are happening here on Amazon are slow down, are cool off, and Amazon is trying to find value for its company uh, at these price points. I mean, think about it. Amazon under $100 a share. That's a steal, if you ask me. I think Amazon's a great company, and they still have a lot more to do. And there is more potential future growth for them. Now, I am not Jeff Bezos, and uh, I don't run this company, uh, but I believe in it. And uh, I use their services. And I know a lot of people out there who talk about Amazon and use their services. So will they go out of business anytime soon? In my personal opinion, I don't think it is. 
So buying shares below $100, I think that's a steal. And that's a great opportunity for us to take long positions and versus trying to short it. I don't think shorting it from 92 to 90 will make great profits. But I think grabbing it from 95 to 102 or even to 110 would bring us greater profits. Even if we don't buy shares, we can catch that movement all the way back up. Okay. So the company that you're looking for, the, the stock, the asset that you're um, charting, always ask yourself too if it's at a great price point that you may find um, great importance and great risk to reward. Right, your setup. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer here. I'm not gonna answer here. You know, uh, anywhere in these levels, anywhere inside here. I'm waiting for the break of that 95 or um, at the touch of like 91, uh, 86, like we said. And then my stop loss will be like that 91, uh, 91, 50. Uh, that's that's how patient I'm gonna be on Monday. If that trade doesn't come, then guess what? I don't take the trade. I don't come in forcing a trade on something that I think has to happen. I'm going to come in at a specific level and I'm going to stop out right below. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, that's part of charting. Okay. Um, you don't need that many lines. You just need a couple. And that's, that's all I really have. And I'm not drawing anymore. Okay. All right. We're going to chart. Um, let's chart INTC. I like INTC. What is the first thing you see? Boom. Okay. Are we on a downtrend or are we on the uptrend? If you answered uptrend, you're wrong. The answer is downtrend. So on that downtrend, what do we have here? It looks like we are currently trying to uptrend, but look at this. We are going sideways now. Okay. This is important to understand now. All right. Where do we know that it's gonna go back up, okay? Where is this something gonna change? Where do we have support, okay? Let's figure this out. First of all, I'm gonna grab this bottom and I'm gonna see if that's even a potential trend line, okay? First of all, it doesn't touch this wick, so it can't be considered here. Can't be considered here. Definitely can't be considered in here. But can it be considered here? Of course, okay? Yes, it can. Where is the base? Where is the stop? Right here. See this little base here? How we kind of just went sideways? And then here, boom, there you go. This is your previous base and the only base that shows you a green momentum and um, a good retest right here. Next thing I want to do is look for the top, the top of this base, okay? So I want to grab the meat of the bone which is here. Right here is where we kind of stalled, stalled, stalled. And then right here, rejected perfectly and then dropped down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my alerts over 30. And I'm going to set my alerts down here at this bottom. Right here. And I'm going to look for a potential dip by with my stop loss down below. Number one because this is a potential demand. Number two, we have a trend line. Number three, my stop loss is right below. That's how risk, uh, that's how easy the risk reward is here. And over the 30, same thing. Long over 30 and give myself about 10, 20 cents here as a stop loss. Very, very simple. Because I know that if we do break over 30, we are going to continue to uh, push up and follow this specific trend here, okay? Not this, not this um, huge trend, but change trend over 30 and continue on up. So the price action will continue to be bullish. If I buy the dip here, I am aware that we are on a bigger downtrend, but the short term is pushing up right now. And if it decides to drop on down, I took an amazing trade because I stopped out right below. Very, very easy to understand. So again, figure out where you're at, figure out the current levels, look at those bases where things change and find the uh, the levels that you're going to set alerts on and you are going to take trades on, all right? No matter what goes on in the world, 
it doesn't matter how things are moving. It doesn't matter what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If we're still inside here Thursday, Friday, guess what? I will never know. I've never took the trade because my alert never hit. Part of being a trader and charting is being patient for your own setup. If you waited patient enough for every single one of your trades, I can almost guarantee you that your execution will come out flawless. Whether you get stopped out, whether you take profit, as long as you respect your levels and the levels where things change, everything will be okay. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's that's literally the game plan. If you can follow this game plan for INTC and Amazon alone, I can almost guarantee you that you'll make some amazing trades this week if you only wait for those levels to hit. But remember, the minute something breaks, go for the opposite direction. Go to the downside. If we reject here, grab some puts and make your stop loss 95, okay? It's okay to do that. It's okay to play both sides. You just mentally have to be ready because if, if you're not mentally ready and, and then you go for a put instead of the call, then you're going to get stopped out. And in a minute you try to grab a call, you're going to get stopped out because it's going to pull back on you, okay? So be wise as to uh, your emotional bias. And be wise as to the position size that you're going to be taking and be wise enough to respect that stop loss, okay? Um, but anyways, hopefully this helps you guys understand a little bit more about charting and just how to figure out a little quick game plan. Like I didn't do that many lines. I didn't do nothing crazy. I just identified where things changed, where the little bases were. I put a little line right there that, that says my alert right here. As you can see, tons of alerts on Amazon. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for Monday. One of these alerts is going to hit. And whatever one comes first, that's my game plan that I'm going to be doing. Okay. If it doesn't hit, then I guess I'll wait till Tuesday. Two days, Tuesday doesn't hit, then I'll wait till Wednesday. It doesn't matter. I will be patiently waiting for those specific setups. Okay. Um, but anyways, y'all have a good one and enjoy your weekend.